for many years I have been after an affordable thermal camera or thermal imager. And what we have here from Banggood does not really qualify as a full feature thermal camera like the, the Fleurs or, um, or other high priced devices. It is the simplest thing that you can possibly imagine to get a thermal image, I think. And the way it works is it has the, um, Panasonic grid eye sensor. Now, operation of this thing is as easy as could be. It does not have any buttons. It's completely auto ranging. So whatever comes up as red on the image is, uh, the, the hottest temperature in the field of view. And it, it's totally auto ranging. So if we, if we move away from the coffee mug, we can see that the, the scale on the left also auto calibrates. And if we take away the mark, we see the, the hot spot that it leaves. That, that was, was good to see here that, that it's to totally auto ranging. Now what we, what we have in here, as said, uh, I've been after this Panasonic grid eye sensor for, quite a while and initially they were fairly high priced but they have come down a lot and they are uh, available to the consumer market now what we have here is the 8833 and that is the 3.3 volt high gain um, variant of the device now while high gain does seem like something you'd want it does actually limit the temperature range of the sensor. So the high gain goes from zero degrees centigrade to 80, while the low gain goes from minus 20 to plus 80 degrees. Now, with that and being in wintertime now, I think I can go outside and see if we get an image below zero degrees. which does not seem to be the case. So it's uniformly below freezing here. I think it's like, like minus three degrees. And of course my leg is somewhat warmer. Okay, what I actually needed this uh, device for is to find faults in electronic devices. Now I have two HUG RFs and one of them is faulty, taking quite a lot of current and all the energy has got to go somewhere. So let's compare um, a fully functional HUG RF PCB being powered up for a couple of seconds to uh, the faulty one. You can see some variations in the in the temperature, but that, that's minimal. It's all like uh, hand warm at, at best. It's around 20-ish degrees on the hottest component, which will probably be something like the, the voltage regulator. Now let's switch over to that broken device. Now that does take an awful lot of current, depending on its mood, somewhere between 400 and 800 milliamps. So we fairly quickly can detect a hotspot here and that appears to be the main processor. And also, yeah, that's not that hot, but we can also, of course, see that the voltage regulator's got to do a lot more work than it actually should. Now over here, it all appears to be rather peaceful until the point where we come to the main process again and of course the voltage regulator so what i had done with this board was i have found a well the telltale crater on the usb esd protection that is actually supposed to protect the processor from outside static in this case, I have the suspicion that probably the processor has blown the uh, the protection circuit. I have already removed the protection service, uh, circuit, which is, uh, I'll show you. 
which is here on the PCB. And that hasn't rectified the situation. So I initially thought that was the fault. But with the processor being that hot, I think that has to be removed, which will be, well, quite a bit of work. And also those uh, voltage regulator got a bit hot, but not that badly. So I think they survived it. And I checked the voltages. They're still all right. Now, so let's see what we find inside this thermal emitter. It's easy enough to take apart, and I don't think that will be there will be an awful lot of stuff in it. Let's zoom in a little. Now we can see a PCB version 5.1 from 2020. The actual sensor in the middle. This seems to be a programming interface. That's, of course, a 3.3 volt regulator, the USB port, which does not have any data lines. So we'll never get an image out of this back to a computer. And there is this processor and it's, well, most of its pins, of course, go to the, to the display. Now let's see what we have here. That is an ARM processor, but it's not the same ARM processor as in the documentation that's been provided by Banggood. So the actual processor really is a different model. It's a M3 Cortex processor. And we find a data sheet of that, of course. Okay, let's see. This is quite a capable little device, much more than uh, than your typical Arduino would be, which probably even explains the the decent uh, performance that it uh, that, that we can see on the display. Now so that'll be that'll be all for today. Thanks. Bye.